So welcome back guys. In this video, we'll talk about the practical implementation of Maven. So in the last video, we have talked about the theory of Maven. So just to give a quick recap, what is Maven? So Maven is a build tool. So let's say you want to create a new project in which you want a project structure. You want something that will compile your files. You want something which will test your application and you want something which will give you all the required libraries. So the main problem arises when you have when you want to create an application using Spring. So let's say you want to build an application in which you have to use Spring. Maybe you have to use Hibernate. For those Spring and Hibernate, we have we require some dependencies, which is libraries. So if you want to work with Hibernate, you require libraries. To work with Spring or Sturge, you require libraries. Now to 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 get all these libraries, you have to go to a website which is let's say Spring.io and you can download your libraries here right? that's very easy right but the problem is so when you go to go to the spring so where you will get all the jar files required so if you click on this project uh, you can see spring provides lots of uh, frameworks so we'll select spring framework here and if i go to spring framework i have option of download the jar files and we have download link. No, we don't have any download link. So you can see we cannot download the libraries from here. The problem is even if you can download, you know, if Spring provides you the feature uh, to download these libraries, if you don't know about Spring, it's okay. We are just using Spring in our application because I'm making this video so that I can work on Spring in future on this uh, in this series of tutorial. But people who are not concerned about Spring, they are only, they are only watching this video just to learn Maven. So it's okay. Uh, you might be implementing Spring using Maven. You might be implementing Hibernate using Maven. So everything is almost same. You just have to deal with this part. Okay. So it doesn't matter if you're working on Spring or not. So uh, come back to the Spring part. So when, uh, when you talk about uh, this download file, so even if you can download the Spring libraries, maybe in future you're, you're downloading the current version, which is four. Maybe in future you have five. So again, you have to download those libraries by yourself, right? So as a developer, you have to download all the libraries. What if you can just mention somewhere in an application that I want Spring libraries and someone else, you know, not you, maybe someone else, a software in your system, which will download all the required libraries. And that someone is Maven. What you have to do is you just have to use this type of text in your application automatically to download all the required jar, jar files for Spring. Not one, all. That's the advantage. So how to use this part in your application? So we don't have to create a normal web normal code Java application. We have to create a Maven application. So for that, we have to click on new. We'll, we'll click on other. Uh, by default, whenever you create an application, you always choose Java project. But this time we'll choose Maven project because we want to create a Maven project. We'll click on next. Uh, it is asking for the default work location and uh, I will keep it as default which is checked. Uh, if you click on next, uh, there are lots of options. So you can see a term here which is archetype. So as we have discussed in the last video, uh, so archetype is just a template of your project. So let, let's say you want to build a code Java application. So you have to choose archetype. Uh, you have to create a web application. So you have to choose a different archetype. So you can see if you want to create a web application, you have to choose this archetype, which is Maven hyphen archetype hyphen web app. Uh, in this, I'll be using a code of application. So I'll be, I'll be choosing this one, which is Maven archetype quick start. So quick start will give you the code of application. Uh, so if you think we don't, we have only this number of options uh, and the answer is no. So you can also click on all catalog. So as soon as I click on all catalog, you can see something is happening here. It is try, trying to download all the archetypes available in the remote server. Okay, so Maven is a network ready network ready framework. So when you want to work with Maven, you have to make sure you have a proper internet connection enabled. So I will not, yeah, so you can see uh, we have lots of archetypes available. So if you want to work with App Engine, if you want to work with AWS, for everything we have a different archetype available. So you can see this is App Engine, uh, yeah, we have lots of uh, archetypes here. Even I don't know all these archetypes. Doesn't matter. So we have to choose the next one, which is internal. Uh, so this is internal archetypes, which will choose Maven archetype quick start, and then we'll click on next. 
So you can see we have a group ID. So basically group ID is your package name. Uh, so we'll, we'll say group ID is .com .navin and we'll make this application name as uh, telescope. Okay, that's my application name. So group ID is your package name and then this artifact ID is your project name. So it, uh, it pack, the package name combines the group ID, it's a combination of group ID and artifact ID, which is com.navin.telescope. And then yeah, that's it. So we'll click on finish. So as soon as you click on finish, it will create a project. Okay. And then you can see if you expand this uh, Maven dependencies, you already have a jar file here. Okay. Now from where you're getting this jar file? So this jar file is coming from the remote server. But hold on, every time you create a new application, the jar files will be coming from remote, remote application. Since already I have created a project in which I have JUnit, so what your Maven will do is, it will create two repositories. One will be the remote repository, second will be the local repository. The remote repository will be on remote server and the local repository will be on your machine. Now how to check where is the remote repository? So it's, it is giving the path, so it is users. Uh, Navin, Navin, it's my user account name and then the folder name is .m2 which is by default hidden folder in m2 folder we have repository and in repository we have the type of uh, library which is uh, where is the pop -up? it is junit and then junit and the version is 3.8.1 okay so just to confirm let's see where it is where the file is so I will open my terminal so if you are using Mac or uh, Unix, so you can just open your terminal and type ls, and you can see we don't have any folder called as dot. Uh, what do you say? Uh, dot m2. So what we can do is we'll say clear, and we'll say ls hyphen a. So as soon as you say ls hyphen a, you can say you can see there is a folder called as dot m2. So again, let's say clear. We'll say ls, not ls. We'll say cd dot m2. So yeah. So currently I'm into m2 folder and we'll say ls just to list the folders I have a repository folder uh, let me go to repository ls I have all these folders here uh, so you can see there's a junit folder so we'll say cd junit ls again a junit folder so we'll say junit ls and then we can you can see we have two jar files one is 3.8.1 and then we have 3.8.2 so maybe some you know Maybe last time I have created a project using the latest uh, Java file, which is 3.8.2. But hold on, where I have mentioned uh, which version I'm to, I want to use and which Java files I need. So uh, in this project structure, you can see there is something called as uh, pom.xml. So the main part of Maven is this file, which is pom.xml. So you can see all your configuration in this file, which is pom.xml also called as pom.xml now in this you have to mention something you have to mention the group id again you don't have to write all this thing when you create a project you will get everything so you will get a group id you will get the artifact id and the packaging type so if you are creating a code job application it will be a jar file if you are creating a web application it will be a var file uh, next uh, this then this is very important for you this is called a dependencies now whenever you create an application in that application, if you want to use any third-party API, so you have to mention that dependency here. So if you want to use a JUnit in your project, so you have to mention this dependency. Since you are mentioning uh, group ID as JUnit, artifact ID as JUnit, and then version is 3.8.1, that's why you are getting this one. How about, let me do some experiment. Let me write 3.8.2. So you can see it says building a workspace, and then it is it has changed, 3.8.2 because it was already there in my local 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 repository uh, let me do some experiment. I don't know even that that exists 3.8.0 so if I say you can say it, it takes some time to build an error so if we don't have anything called as 3.8.1 or 8.0 maybe just a wild try I've not done this experiment before so I might get an error yeah, so I'm getting these errors so we don't have uh, current available 3.7.1, we have 3.8.1 and 3.8.2. Okay, so that's how we have to create this uh, three point, this, this JNUT here. Now the next part is you have to, when you expand this folder SRC, so you can see, not this SRC, let's expand this SRC. 
So in SRC, we have two folders. One is main and test. So if you expand main, you have Java. So if, I hope you remember the package name, which is com dot Navin dot Telesco. If I expand Telesco, I have a file which is app dot Java. And by default, you can see we have something called as hello world. Awesome, right? So you don't have to write, it, write this code. At least you will be getting the basic code by, by itself. And then this is a project structure. So the advantage of using Maven here is you get a project structure. You also get all the de de required dependencies. But hold on, I want Spring libraries now. How to get those libraries? Now it's damn easy. Just open your POM file. So you can see we have a dependencies tag here. And that in that dependencies, we have a dependency which is JUnit. How about if I add one more dependency? Now how to do that? Just go to Spring website and just copy this dependency as we have done uh, we have we have navigated this part uh, in the sort of sort of tutorial so just copy this dependency go to eclipse and paste and see the beauty of maven now so you get all the required jar files right and it is everything is coming from the remote server again since i have done this application before i am getting all this from the local repository so if you are doing it for the first time, it will download everything from the remote repository and it will take some, it may take some time from 20 seconds to one minute, depending upon internet speed, or maybe 10 seconds if you are using a high speed internet. Uh, since I, I, I already have this into my local repository, it, it doesn't take much time. Simple, so this is how you have to create a simple Maven application. So in the next part, we'll be talking about how to implement Spring and how to achieve dependency injection. So I hope you have liked this video. So do thumbs up. You can see uh, in the bottom side, there's a thumbs up button. And do comment if you have any doubt. I will try to resolve in my next video. So thank you so much for watching and do subscribe for further videos.